strong. In seven, three, two. Oh, you know that? Counter. Counter. Give me all that. That's a lot of numbers. Tom, in seven, three, two. We are Twatcast, episode 246. Okay. All right, everyone shut the f*** up. We are Twatcast! Wheel of Time, re-rated podcast, explicit and R-freaking-rated. John is the wild card, always talking shit. Joe's the straight man, he's a total dick. Tom calls in if he's not too busy. We are You're listening to Twatcast, the Wheel of Time re-re-read podcast, now covering Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, book one, The Eye of the World, written by Robert Jordan, (laughs) the author of The Wheel of Time. We'll be covering book one, The Eye of the World. I'm Jono, and with me as always is Joe. Hey, (laughs) Jono. And with me today is Tom. (laughs) Study your math. You did so poorly in the beginning. (laughs) I don't see where I'm You study your math very well. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Well, you know Tom, what? There's, there are hilarious moments when, like, me and John will just be by ourselves and I'll be like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And then John will just be like, fuck, we should probably study our math. <laughs> like, well, even when you're not here. It's uh, permeated our minds. I hate it. I'm really glad it's caught on. Just also, like, it reminded your your intro reminded me, John, of when you used to say Robert Hordan. <laughs> <laughs> Roberto Hordan. Bienvenidos. I just remembered that because you rolled your R. Robert Jordan. Yes, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Don. You guys want to hear some news? 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 news, 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 news. news. Oh yeah. Sanderson's writing the Mistborn screenplay right now. Right, currently? That's what he said. At uh, what time is it? I don't know. Mm-hmm. He's probably not writing anymore. Well, it's I don't know. It's a couple hours. Four forty-seven Mountain Time on a Tuesday. He might be. He really doesn't have a shit to do on a Tuesday besides not drink. He also doesn't keep regular <laughs> hours. I guess, I imagine. I like I like that you jump right to Utah time. I was going to tell you just what time it was here. Well, you live in Utah. Also, the uh, Rhythm of War is now the official title of Stormlight Archive Four. I think that's a great title. I like is that it. that's he finished that right? No. I don't know if he's done. No, it's in beta. I think it's in beta. Is it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I yeah, I'm pretty sure he finished, like, before Christmas or something. At any rate, it's the official title now, officially. Official. It's officially official. Well, I know it's due out by the end of the year, but that doesn't mean anything. He could be at, like, 18%. Because he's the only person I know who ever just says percent of a book. Yeah. And is correct. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I've got 18% left. He's he's accurately. He has 18% left. Because yeah. he knows exactly how many words he's going to make it. <laughs> Crazy. Do you guys remember that famous Gloria Stefan song, The uh, the War Is Gonna Get You? <laughs> yeah, The War Is Gonna Get You, yeah. I remember that. I like that one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> that joke's I'm... gonna get me. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect that reaction. Well, I started choking on water because it's the fucking dumbest thing I've heard. I fucking loved it. <laughs> water. <laughs> fucking pretty bad joke. It's beer. Uh... <laughs> You should have seen Sanderson in college. Like, it's just like, uh oh, we know that this ter- midterm is going to cover forty eight percent of the book. You're like, what does that mean? You know, forty eight percent. The exact amount. Yeah, the exact <laughs> amount. Four hundred thirty eight pages of our new textbook about Mormonism. <laughs> Come on, guys. Also, he I'm, tweeted out some I'm, amazing uh, ta- town talent talent in the lemonade lemonade. What's his name? He's one of the one of those god people. You know what I mean? Tom. That's him. Yeah, Tom. T A L N. Yeah. You just sound like you're babbling. <laughs> I am kind of babbling. Have you not listened to our podcast? But, uh. <laughs> you're on it. What's the guy's name? Talanenanol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talaran Riyad. Yeah. What know. are you talking about? One of the characters from Stormlight Archive, you dickhead. Uh, how does he know the percentage? Like, does he type out, like, you know, 52 words and he's like, well. No, I'm telling you, he knows the exact word count of the book before he writes it. And then I he guess can, he does. He can yeah. figure it out. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah. <laughs> I think he, he allots the, himself a, 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 the, a certain amount of words per chapter, ver, like not the same amount, but, you know, based on his outline. And then he's like, this book, that means this book will be X amount of words. I'm going to stick to that. And I think he does. He's very, very close. What if he gets to the end and he hits 100% and he still has three words left to write? He's like, fuck. He goes fuck back and this. edits. I fucked this. He's just 
Yeah, it gets in cuts three words. <laughs> if you ever notice the end of the third Mistborn book, just it says it said. <laughs> and, then, and then Kaladin. This is the like, end of the. The <laughs> end. Of Stormlight Archive book three. What? He was deeply influenced he by. Say Stormlight Archive book three though. He ran out of words. This is the end of the. It's deeply influenced by Monty That's Python and the Holy Grail That's the weird. castle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Castle's, castle's names actually are. <laughs> but he, he tweeted out artwork of that one guy from uh, by Dan DeSantos who was at JordanCon last year, John. Yeah. I was sitting next to him drinking. Pretty, yeah, he was a super nice guy. But yeah. it was pretty fucking amazing. And I was like, God damn, it's such good art. Yeah. He has some really good artists like putting in art in the end papers. He always has Michael Whalen do the covers, but I mean, like, the end papers are amazing in those books. You really. know who else gets Michael Whalen? I, ex- I, I like how much art is in those books, I guess, is what I'm saying. Robert Jordan, dead, still gets Michael Whalen to do his covers. <laughs> I like the drawings of plants. <laughs> Especially the ones I that do- look like they may be cum. Some of those sketches are, like, dumb and whatever. Especially the last book when she couldn't draw. <laughs> <laughs> But some of the sketches, I'm just like, whatever. It's very uh, methodical and, like, textbooky illustrations, which is what they're trying to do, which is fine. But, I mean, at the same time, like, some of them are really good, though. But those aren't all done by the same people, I think. I don't know. I don't know, just, I don't know who he has doing the inside stuff, but... Well, it should definitely have it be the same person. We're supposed to kind of think it's her doing it, right? The Sharon. Well, I think... Not, she's not the only illustrations inside there. Some of them are like a folio of the fashion of blah 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 or whatever. Like well, it's not shallow. No, it's Shout. not shallow. It's just like a magazine that what's his face. Oh yeah, it's true. So like, like there's parts where it's not shallow. So like I, I skip by that pretty quick, and I don't know if all of that makes it into the ebook. Oh yeah, I don't know if it. I mean, I assume it does. I'm, I'm here for words. Not you probably papers. don't get the end papers, I would imagine. He's also here for radiance. I don't know if you put that much artwork into your book. I, I'd want it to be on the ebook, but I mean that. Like, and that's I'm crazy. That's me because I'm obsessed. Crazy, crazy. So, what do you guys? Uh, you guys, you guys want to talk about? Well, we got a book. Uh, the wheel, the wheel of time. You guys want to talk about uh, what you're reading, watching, and play? Uh, sure. I'm reading The Wheel of Time Good. and uh, the fourth Witcher book. I forget which one that is. Uh, <clears throat> enjoying The Witcher. Uh, again, after The Last Wish, which was the first one that's technically published, and well, I published as far as what it's supposed to lead chronologically, Yeah. Uh, it gets way better. I think I've mentioned how many times I've really disliked the translating. Yeah. 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 yeah probably about 15 times. Cause probably, was, probably about yeah. 15, yeah. Really? Pretty engrossing stuff, though. Uh, once you get past that, okay. They get a different translator. I understand. Maybe I'll read those. No. Yeah. yeah I mean. Ah. Yeah. You don't need to. I don't want to read all yeah. those Mistborn books before. That's actually. You don't, you don't need to read The Witcher. I just watch the TV show. It's just watch that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do love Henry Cavill Superman. Yeah. Well, so I mean, I'll watch that show just because he's in it. Do you like him being monotone? Do you like him? I mean, Superman's not like filled with emotion or anything, so like it's. Well, it's still a kryptonite. No, he's not. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> bad. As soon as I said it, I was like, that's not right at all. You know, he's filled with. <laughs> that would be very bad. Come tonight. Oh, come. Because he's going to come tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That was so bad. <laughs> and yet weirdly clever. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's pretty much just me in a nutshell. Awesome Powers joke. Uh, what are you watching, John? What am I watching? Uh, Big Mouth Season 3. I haven't watched that at all yet. I do like Nicole, but, but not we, that much. We started that. It was pretty funny. I don't know why we didn't keep watching it. It's kind of like... like you can. I only watch it when I'm drunk, which is admittedly a pretty big window. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you can't watch TV when you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time. But there's also... There's something about it. Like You gotta be kind of like at the right... like. <laughs> Not shit hammered, but kind of in the mood to just like, really, it's before you eat. <laughs> Specifically, like, before you eat. It's like, like I'm like silly. A lot of I eat. gross shit in that. No, no, like, I'm, like, I'm silly before I eat, like on Friday or Saturday. Like, wait, we just start getting drunk at like two or three. It <laughs> doesn't sound good. Uh, and no, then, that's normal. And then, like, after I eat dinner, I'm kind of like, you know what I want to do? I like to just fucking pass out. 
Like, fuck and not fucking. Uh, so I'm not going to watch the animated like, show about, like, 12 years. I thought you were going to say something, like, fucking filthy. You're like, you know what I want to do? I'm going to fucking pass up. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah, that's pretty much. That's, what are you playing, Jono? Who cares? Because you don't play anything. Uh, Tom, what are you reading? FIFA 20, Dragon Quest 11. Oh, that's FIFA it. 20. All right. Yeah. FIFA. Yeah. New still, game came still, out. Still playing FIFA, huh? Yeah, 19. Every year? Every year. <laughs> we all played the same things forever. Why yeah, I know. That's why I don't. That's why I moved on quickly. Ne- <laughs> let's never talk about it again. Um, Tom, what are you reading? Uh, another Haruki Murakami book. It's not interesting to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's called Killing Commentador, and it's about some artist that got divorced, so we went to do artwork in the mountains, and all of a sudden, like, a small ghost man has appeared, and that's about as far as I've got. It sounds interesting. It sounds kind of, <laughs> It is interesting. A small ghost man has appeared. It yeah, sounds a small like a plot from The Witcher. ghost man sitting on the couch, and he's just like, hey! Hey! Bill's asleep now. <laughs> Forever. What's uh, what are you watching? I don't know. I watch so many things. I just finished The Witcher, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you like it? Yeah, it was alright. I was. I, I gotta say, I was probably maybe half paying attention throughout the entire thing and like playing solitaire on my phone. <laughs> so we know what you're playing. Uh, uh, yeah. I've probably yeah. said it four or five times, but I don't know if you've been on the show. I am fascinated and just whatever by where they fucking started for the show they started with book one which is actually a prequel and so like so much of it is like important background to have but at the same time like not where you should start the show maybe no i'm not saying that but and again i forget what i fucking said on the show but like (laughs) wait they started with book one yeah but it's but doing three different timelines that actually are not yeah, that took a minute to realize that it was three different timelines that weren't happening, that weren't even happening at the same time. Because that's not with book one. So they're starting to tell me like book one, book four, and book six. And but, how many I mean, which books are there? I think that took a while. Huh. That took a while too because I took was a while. half paying attention and I was just like, wait a minute. Yeah, uh, it, that and I'm just kind of rewatching the Clone Wars since they're going to release a, a new season oh, of yeah. that at the end of the month. <laughs> I'm pretty pumped about that shit. I'm pretty excited about that too. Um, except I, there's no way I can watch all that show. Although uh, Jeff Daniel from uh, Tavern Tees just posted on Facebook in our little nerdy Star Wars group that uh, Disney Plus has like a has like a essential Clone Wars like playlist or something. And I was like, I, he's like, hey, if you don't have time to watch all seven seasons, watch a few of these. I was like, oh, that's maybe I will. Thanks for letting me know that existed. There's how many seasons? There's six, but they're releasing like a seventh one, but it's been so long. It's been. That it's like, I don't, I mean, I kind of remember, of course, but I mean, like, I don't really remember everything. And I'm, like, I sort yeah, of want to watch mean, it all, but I don't, there's no way I have time. And you don't need just to watch it. I yeah, don't I don't need, need to, to watch, watch any of it to understand any of it. But like, of I just course not. Do, I'm doing it because I feel like it. But yeah. Like, I'm not, not religiously, like, just here and there. I think I'm in like just wrapped up season two I think I'm definitely gonna just watch that essentials playlist probably just to kind of like cause that's curated so clearly there's like beats and story arcs in there that they're like hey remember this was happening what'd you do if it was just all six seasons it was just, a fuck, <laughs> just a fuck you essentials clone wars yeah one through six I can't, I can't wait but I mean I like that show better than I liked any of the movies ever so I mean it's a really good show bring it back um yeah, so I haven't really... Joe? Well, I'm rereading the Millennium Trilogy, and right now I'm in The Girl Who Played With Fire. Oh, yeah. I need to actually start... We talked about that the other night, didn't we? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if we talked about it. Is that rereadable? Yeah. It is, because it's been a go. long time, and I don't really remember it. Especially... I mean, I remember Just Dragon Tattoo pretty well, but I don't remember Fire or Hornet's Nest, like, almost at all. I only read Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, but the other day, the Daniel Craig movie was on, which I thought was pretty well done. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not perfect. Good. But I do love the look on the guy's face when he's torturing Daniel Craig. Spoiler. And he's just kind of like... <laughs> he's supposed to say that before. Spoiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoiler. What's the spoiler? He's torturing Daniel Craig, <laughs> and he just looks at him and he's like, I've never had a man in here before. You mean Mikhail Blumpkiss? Blum- yeah, Blum- yeah. Blum- <laughs> Blumpkiss. And he's just kind of like... 
How do I torture and rape this guy? Well, whatever. I'll figure it out. Is yeah, I've never tortured and raped a man before, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> I, used to, I used to get uh, I used to get forced to have sex with my father all the time. So you know, it yeah. don't come, oh. it don't come second nature. Odds are, I can do this. <laughs> uh, so where's your it's, where's your heart? <laughs> uh, to answer your question, Tom, it's it's re-readable. It's fun. I mean, it's been a long enough time, and I don't remember the details. So I'm kind of like, I wasn't even a hundred percent sure if Harriet was alive or not. I was like, wait, did she die or was she alive in the end of this book? I mean, so that's like a really huge note in the Dragon Tattoo. So like, obviously, if I don't remember that, like, I'm pretty good to go. But I'm really doing it because I want to read the new ones. Yeah. And I was just like, ah, fuck it, I'll just read them all. Steve Lawson. He's dead, right? Yeah, it's somebody. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, there's no really new ones. There's well, it's a it's ones. a Brandon Sanderson, Steve Larson book, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Sandarson. But I have, I want to read Spider's Web, and I haven't read that. And then I think there's a second one already. That's a song by. Uh, or maybe it's not out yet. No <laughs> doubt, so, so John. Yeah, thanks. I know. I, I trailed off just because I was like, you know, it's not even worth making. And I haven't been chill. watching this for a yeah. while, but me and Tom haven't talked about it yet. I finished Watchmen, and it was fucking amazing. Yeah, it's one of the best shows. I've and ever I was seen really upset that they're never making another season. Although it's at the same time, it makes complete sense that they're not doing that. Do you know why? Uh, I still wish they would. Because I wish they would. But at the same time, I'm a, I'm 100 percent fine with it. <laughs> Technically, yeah, you fine. guys are watching. Well, I mean, I'm not fine with it because I want more. But it's not like they're leaving anything undone. I guess. Yeah, and they could they could also do a thing where they five to ten years from now come back and make another one, like Avatar. Because, I mean, this one takes place, you know, the original is 85, and now this one's in 2019, so. Yeah, spoilers for Watchmen. My only problem with it is that the whole show was, like, there's no way they would have been able to kill Dr. Manhattan, and even what they did, I don't think would have killed him. I don't either. But then again, maybe he's not dead. Yeah, that's all. I was just like, that's ridiculous. We've seen it too many times. Other than that, I'm watching His Dark Materials on HBO. Which I want to get to that. Okay. Oh. Well, so that's... far, I like it. Okay. It's just... I mean, I saw the movie a million, Golden Compass like a million years ago, but I don't remember it. But then, it was in the same universe? Yeah, Golden Compass is the first book. I've never His Dark read Materials them. is the whole like thing. I've never read or seen I haven't read it either. Yeah, any of them. So. We just started watching it as like a new show. Me and Lauren are watching it. We're like, oh, that's pretty good. It's pretty. It's kind of fun so far. I mean, we're only like a few episodes in, so I have no like solid like. You have to watch this amazing show, but like, right now it's pretty good. I like it so far. I keep I, thinking that woman in the show is Tom Cruise's wife from Mission Impossible, and they're just oh. two different actresses that look exactly the same. It's crazy. Penelope Cruz. I know exactly who you're talking. About. Yeah, yeah. No, I, no, not Penelope. Cruz. It's Michelle it's Monaghan. Last name. Somebody else. And they do look the same. <laughs> Sorry, I just killed Joe with the world's dumbest joke. <laughs> They're the same last night. <laughs> Don't you get it? <laughs> I'm playing Star Wars Guys of Clear Heroes. Of course, who cares? Moving on. Well, you mentioned earlier spoilers. So I let, did mention spoilers. Let yes. me give you a spoiler <clears throat> warning. Uh-huh. We're going to talk about anything, everything in this goddamn book series called Twat. And uh, this is our episode covering the Eye of the World written by... Jobbert Rorden. There you go. Thank you. Uh, we'll be covering chapters 12 minus 15, which is, of course, four chapters, even though it says negative three. Hooray, man. It's very confusing. Uh, Study it. <laughs> that shouldn't have made me laugh, but it There's did. a random character in the first Sherlock Holmes movie with Robert Downey called Rorden. <laughs> and they reference his name a lot, although the character's dead almost the entire movie. <laughs> Because he was like making a bomb or something. Is that the uh, a dwarf? Or yeah, whatever? the dwarf character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And cover. every time you say that, it makes me remember that character. And I'm like, why the fuck am I constantly <laughs> thinking of reliving, yeah. <laughs> thinking of Sherlock Holmes movie? Because of you. Because of you, John. Because of me. Chapter so, twelve. Right. Yeah, oh. let's talk about it. I got a solid hour. All right. This is across the Terran. And lo- leaving the two rivers. So what's funny about that is, you know, realistically, it seems like leaving the two rivers, it really, it's really the one river that's an issue. Uh, because, like, no one's really that confused <laughs> by like, the Manifendorelli. Because it's really like the Forest of Shadows <laughs> to the South. I say that for sure. Yeah, that's correct. Manifendorelli. 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 A fair amount of stuff takes place in these chapters. That's correct. No, I agree, yeah. 
What are you talking about? Map lines? You want to talk more about map lines, Jono? Again, it's not the second river. That's the fucking border. It's like, like we should be at like the one river, one forest. Because the forest is hundreds of miles fucking long. That's really the issue. Like, they're t- he's I mean, I think it's just that this land I is know, but, uh, <laughs> bordered by two rivers. <laughs> you know what they call a continent, right? Do you think Terran Ferry people consider themselves part of the two rivers? I really want war on this. Because I feel like they don't. It seems like they should, though. Because They you know, absolutely should. Like, when, like, later on, when Perrin's a lord, right. and he carves out literally... Quite like two rivers. <laughs> quite contractually with Elaine, I mean. Yeah. When he carves out, like, this is the land that is the two rivers that I'm in charge of, I'm as, I'm assuming that the Terran Ferry is <laughs> draws a quick squiggly yeah. line around it. <laughs> yeah, he well, just adds a Sharpie Terran. mark like Trump. Just like... But wasn't Terran Ferry was wiped out or something? That is correct, Tom. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah that's oh, yeah, burned Terran out. Ferry's gone, yeah. It's burned down right. by the White Cloaks yeah. before. He doesn't, he doesn't need to... Uh, I mean, I guess he could add it to the land. Well, I mean, but, like, but yeah, but that's the area, though. Well, so, Tom, you missed, uh, like, last week and the week before. Uh, the, one of the things that made me kind of confused about this fucking city or town, this town, is the fact that it's all built on stilts because if there's annual flooding. flooding. What's so, confusing about that? Build it somewhere goddamn else. <laughs> no, no. All their, bus- all their business is on the water. Then again, fucking, I don't know, build up some, like, take some earth, fucking build up a little area around it, so this way you oh, don't... You see, so you think they should have levees now. Yeah. Before you were like, move it 30 feet back, and now you're saying... <laughs> Either one's an option. <laughs> well, maybe, all right, you, listen, think about this. Maybe one guy was like, well, we're going to flood all the time. Fuck this. I'm going to build my store 300 yards away. And another guy was like, good luck with that. I'm going to build my store right here by the river on stilts. And, and then the he business. went out of business, Jono. <laughs> I feel Tom like it's... Sol- he's saying solid, logical thoughts right now. <laughs> Maybe, but I feel like it's almost, in fact, the opposite, where it's like Monty Python, and then he fell into the river. <laughs> and then he also fell into the river. And then one of these guys eventually figured out how to do fucking concrete pilings, and they stood up. <laughs> so the, re- the recap of this whole chapter is they cross the ferry and sleep in a tree fort i only want to talk about the tree fort <laughs> <laughs> i'm baffled by it well my number one note is that they're aching from horses <laughs> they're all walking funny and they're really achy from the horses i want to know why it is that moraine tells Lan, don't let him remember me at one point i'm like oh, okay that makes sense but wait a minute are you talking about hightower the ferryman yeah I- I- you're not coming back here. You've already announced your presence to everyone in Emmons Field. And yeah, that news yeah. I'd imagine would be pretty big news for them. Yeah. And it would travel. No one from no one from Emmons Field is going to Terran Ferry. But what what's the di- what's they the do issue? A little. Cl- the issue is like like hey, we don't want the fucking Ooh. it's not these people in Terran Ferry. Anyone selling wool or tobacco, I'd imagine. <laughs> Why? I don't know about any Two River salesmen. I think people come to them. That's correct. Do they? Yeah. It's just flood into the Two Rivers? They make it seem like the peddler was like a big fucking deal. Yeah, merchants yeah, don't only, flood the in. The only people that go to the, leave the Two Rivers is like if a wisdom in another town gets sick. They're not it. out of the Two Rivers when they're at Terran Ferry, though. That's the key. Well, they don't leave them in field either. Well, uh, no, but I'm the, pretty sure. I mean, even Rand and Matt and Perrin have been up to Watch Hill. Yeah, once. Yeah, yeah but they're kids. Hill. I'm talking about like the adults that do. <laughs> fucking things there commerce. is there is obviously trade and commerce but the whole point here is like if I'm Moraine like why do you worry about what the fuck these well, people why the fuck do people know about Two Rivers to back because it's really good and a whole bunch of fucking wagoneers come in from Maryland and before that's that's the whole point which is gonna be very interesting for okay me. anyway moving on anyway let's uh, get more into the trade routes of the Two Rivers we'll do that later so here's a question no I man when you let's get more into the tra- I was like say tree house <laughs> I do want to talk about the weird campsite. By the way, my uh, my note for the beginning, even before I have notes for the chapter, is chapter 12, Across the Terran. Rand, it's a Rand chapter, and it's the location is Terran Ferry and the weird campsite. <laughs> so I'm all ready to talk about the weird campsite. It's what? a bunch of trees that fell on top of each other perfectly to create a cave that no one can see into that Lan and Moraine somehow found. He's a tracker. And, <laughs> like... Eight people can sleep in. Did he That's find big. it? Did he find it or did he make it? Well, no, it, it was made by like. It was river. made by a flood where they all washed up about 30 feet too fucking high because, again, why not build your city there? Uh, and like it, like they all kind of like all the root systems. Wait, they don't camp right on the other side of the. Of the 
Yeah, they're the like hundred feet a fucking way. Like, like it's like, yeah, they, oh, I thought they, they, they like traveled the, a little. They far. walk up the ba- exactly. It's very confusing. They walk up the bank. There's a pile of trees that all fell, fell on top of each other. But there's a secret hole you can crawl in, <laughs> <laughs> and you can fit eight people in there to sleep and have a fire and a fire. And also, the why wood doesn't the get tree wet. Fort, there's eight horses outside. <laughs> It's an eight or seven. It's seven. <laughs> it is insane. The whole thing's insane. <laughs> no, it's it's very, very rent Robert Jordan plot convenient to hide them from all their troubles. <laughs> and they also even mention how lucky they are that fucking drag car goes right over before they've even gone in. So they've got to be like far enough to somehow not be visible and yet. All right, get, like, go back to all your dumb notes that uh, happened before the campsite, Jono, because I'm sure you have a bunch. In, <laughs> we're going to be safe in this tree fort, and no one will notice these horses tied up outside just hanging out together. Well, why would they? Drag- Saddled horses hanging outside a random group of trees. It's fine. Drag car only look for people, not, hum- not yeah, animals. They don't, they don't, they're not looking for horses with saddles on them. They're looking for, uh, you know, a lonely farmer. So they can, <laughs> six foot six gingers. So they can yeah. scroom to them and... You know, <laughs> sing me a song, like old, old Frank Sinatra style. I'm gonna build one of these in my backyard. You what have to be close to What would you do like if a mid, if a dracar came crashing down to the ground and was like, "Fly me to the moon"? And you're like, "What the hell?" The queen just starts Frank marching Sinatra? out, just like just rubbing her pussy, like, "Oh my god." We don't have we don't have real evidence. That's not what they say. Yeah. And that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so back to my dumb notes. As you yeah, said. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so this is obviously a amazing penis reference here. Rand walks into something large and warm in the murk. Lands stunning. <laughs> that sticks out to me every time. Yeah. Large and warm <laughs> in the murk. <laughs> Land Stallion. He <laughs> just walk right into that horse's asshole. Does it say Land Stallion or says Land is a Stallion? Land's got a Stallion. Uh, Land is a Stallion. No, he's got one. Between Large and warm and Land's a Stallion. Between his legs. Yeah, Terry. It, should, it shouldn't be so foggy that you can walk right into a horse's ass. Do you think Rand was like, <laughs> I'm not a broodmare. Yeah. You're a Stallion dick away from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stallion I'm Like a broodmare like my mother. Yeah. I also appreciate, and I wish there were more of this, their plan to just uh, toss off their cloaks to look dangerous <laughs> when the fucking, like, guards come up. Yeah. They're actually uh, just there to paddle, or just to, you know, ferry you they're across. Just, yeah, they're just, pull, they're just pulling on a rope. That's There's maybe a plan to steal. Maybe. If it's How does Hightower pick out these six dudes? Are they guys that are really good at jerking off? Yeah. Their forearms are huge, like Popeye style? Calloused hands. <laughs> yeah. No, they've saying. been jerking guys off yeah. for years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, you wake me up at 2 a.m. to jerk off anything, and I'm there. Anyway. Uh, so, again, what was the plan here? Like, let's pretend we didn't look dangerous. He brought himself and six the other plan guys. plan is that land actually looks dangerous. He brought himself and six other guys. How many people are with Rand's group? There's the three Tiviran. Seven. Yeah, thank you. It's seven on seven. Like, it's not like, like a whole, like, he brought yeah, 30 guys. Two of them are little girls. One of them is an old, gnarled, knuckled man. Yeah. And one of them looks like the most frightening man you've ever seen. I I don't think they want a uh, fight where any one of them could possibly die. They're just like, if they looked easy to rob, they might have been robbed. So need a little deterrent, buddy. Now, Tom, I'm very happy you're on the show because I've got something for you that I think has gone into your theory for years. Rand mentioned that he's kind of nervous about how wide the river is. And we've noticed he's that scared of the water because he's an IO. Or what else are scared of the IO of the water? Trollocs and little, Beardraw. Little kids. <laughs> They're scared of the water. <laughs> but so all kids of a sudden, kids are scared of the dark. The dark ones plan for bad weather. Yeah, really makes sense when you look at it. Like, well, Trollocs are scared of water. Miro, water. Aiel, Oh, he's basing it off his own followers. Yeah, and also, who's the hardiest fucking people? The Aiel. Like, everyone's scared of fucking water. Yeah. I thought, uh, I a little bit of rain, that. everyone's gonna lose their minds. It all when I, makes Like, when I read that part, I was thinking about the Aiel, and, like, every time anybody from Evansfield encounters them, I'm like, you're afraid of the water, pussy. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? You bitches were afraid of the water, too. No, because it's wide. I'm not afraid of water I can see. <laughs> But yeah, I'm afraid of water. I mean, I think it's a cool note that they're 
literally leaving the two rivers right now, which they with which ran notes. What river? <laughs> They're leaving the area called the Two Rivers Channel <laughs> by crossing one river. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have anything to say about rain sinking the ferry and then, like, uh, you know, Rand basically killing Hightower by paying him more money? Uh, how about the fact that Rand gets a shiver when she starts to do it? Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, he has a shiver and pulls up his coat. Well, it's cold outside. You can't be sure. None, none of this, right. none of the Rand hints are sureties. <laughs> They're always just us reading into it too far, probably. But I'm, I'm just some kidding. Could it's, be. De- it's, it's definitely a, a sign. <laughs> Should we talk about it's bullshit that she sinks this guy's ferry? It seems a little. Long. I mean, she does it. I mean, it's dishonest. I suppose. I mean, like, what do you? What's your problems with it? They're obviously Those worried about being caught, so she's like, "Fuck this guy." Who? Those guys. Those guys definitely would have gone back to bed. Yeah. Now, if she'd done it right, she would have waited till they were halfway across the river while they were on it, and then drowned. <laughs> and then sunk the ferry. So I got like three thoughts. Like, first off, like. Why is there nothing on the north side of the river? Like, not even, like, a fucking shack for kind Yeah, you to think in? there would be more, like, <laughs> Cause at least a few structures on the other side. Merchants like, come there in the middle of the night and just yeah. say, ah, fuck it. <laughs> well, if you come in the middle of the night, you're out of luck. Yeah. I guess, I guess so. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. I bet an inn on the other side of the river would make a shitload of money. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that many people come. Well, and that's another question, though. Is like, yeah, but you're the only inn on the other side of the river. <laughs> that's, that's what I would say. Does Hightower have a side job? There can't be that many people crossing this river. Or is that just enough money? Because you own the ferry. Yeah, I mean, I guess when when you 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 send like three people across per year, like that's enough money. Well, it's more than that. Like, they talk about that. He fact, must have a side job. They talk about the fact that people come down for shearing of the sheep. And the I bet his wife back. is like yeah. uh, like slut. Wow. Okay. No, I wasn't gonna say that. I mean, just gonna you know, just you know, like hems dresses or something. Jesus Christ. What did I say? I said <laughs> fix his slits. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what. I, yeah, that's right. But on the other hand, you know what she's done is she has hamstrung commerce for the two rivers indefinitely <laughs> because this no, is the only way. In clearly and out. not. Yeah. Because in this chapter, I always think those six dudes murdered Hightower and took all that money. <laughs> But what we find out later is that Neve crossed the ferry with Hightower, so like clearly he survived somehow. Well, he doesn't take a ferry; she takes a boat. <laughs> oh, she doesn't take a ferry. She takes I, th- a I think she has to pa- paddle across. She has a paddle. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, apparently it's like you've got to go like a mile also, like, How the fuck did he get across? Maybe he just has. A, maybe he has a boat stashed up up river. And it he, could be, and true. he's running to something. Moraine does say like we could have taken a boat down river. To which I'm like. Where the fuck were the boats? No one's mentioned those, but all right. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's a sizable crossing town where there's like you know a few boats. I mean, there's a lot Perhaps. of things down river that make sense for trade, unless it's not too fucking fast. I mean, why not just take this and go down towards like you know towards Ilian? How do those trollocs and fades? Well, get Matt across? mentions that exact plan. Uh, they get across. Oh, I, I don't think they actually do. Um, <laughs> they all drown. No, 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 no. They use way gates. They use the ways. Yeah, they use the ways. And it's possible... Like, they take a way gate from the Terran Ferry to the other side of the river? No, they just use way gates to cross back out the other side, and then a Drakkar swoops down and goes, Hey, they're over here, bro. <laughs> the Drakkar Noir. Yeah, the Drakkar Noir. <laughs> do, uh, do they? I'm trying to think, because we know Fane is sent to cross to follow them. But... He just rides in the boat with a Neve. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some dirty guy. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Yeah. No, I'm not a pet of pain. No, look at me. <laughs> you're really, you're acting really shifty. Do I know you? No, no, you don't. Also, you're 24. Yeah, really. so they stop at Land's Weird Campsite, which I thought was further away, but you guys are saying is very close. It's within... It right there. Yeah, it's like right there. Maybe within a qu- at the quarter mile at the fucking most. Which, again, that's a big fucking river flood. They hobble the horses, and then uh, Moraine talks to Egwene, and... Kind of a Satan, Sadar info dump, and then we learn a Gwen can learn to be an Aes Sedai. Is it weird in hindsight that she channeled like right there the, for, for the first time? It's a resonance, it's not channeling. Oh. Yeah, they talk about that in the testing, all of that. Oh, a Gwen? Oh, uh. I don't know. I don't think it's weird. I don't because she's strong. Like again, it's a test designed to pull out resonance. They do the same thing on uh, <coughs> when 
if you remember, there's a weirdness like when, about when like Rand when goes to the Bla- sending people to learn. Yeah, when Rand goes to the Black Tower, how he feels it before Taim because Taim already knows who's going to. Uh, so like, like some of these people kind of like were expected, but yeah, they, the answer is you feel the resonance within the first hour sometimes if they're strong enough. Yeah, so it just means she's really strong. Yeah, we didn't know that then, but it makes sense now. That's good. All right. Good job, Robert yeah, Hodor. We did it. Yeah, the weird campsite thing is strange, though. We also, like, one of the things that he does do well is kind of, again... Now, who's he? He being Robert Horta. Uh-huh. Roberto. Uh, he manages to put enough backstory into things. He's a ginger dwarf, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Man, just put enough backstory into things without going into it. It's just kind of like, almost like a, you know what I should do is I should write more about this, but I'll give you a hint right now that I hope we don't fuck up later. Like with Tom Marilyn talking about his fucking, like his nephew right here. He gets yeah. briefly, always, like the red jaw is brought up and Tom Marilyn's like, Rrr! Yeah, he and, does, yeah. And that's it. The more... The more side character responses that are so, like, uh, strong with who they actually are as characters for later on is, like, crazy at this point, I think. Like, yeah. when Tom says something, yeah, and, like, there's little things where he's like, oh, don't, don't trust Moran for that. Like, yeah. she's fine to go this far, but... Yeah, you can, and like his whole reason for being there in the first place, you're like, why the fuck is this guy handling? It is suspicious, like, because Lance's suspicious of him, and he's like... Well, they just said they Because he's just tagging yeah. along, you know, kind of thing, and you're just like, what the fuck does this guy have to do with anything? And it's pretty cool. Uh, so, chapter 13? Yeah, choices. What happens in this one? Rand chapter. What? Travel montage. And then, so yeah, I wrote it's the road to Baron. I think it's a weird choice to include this map. Speaking of choices, because this map has nothing to do with this part of the book. I feel like you say that for every map. Oh, I fucking do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what happens in the chapter? Let's, then let's talk about it. It's a week to Barillon. Land scouts ahead. One week. Uh, there's some camp scenes with Rand and Egwene arguing. Tom tells stories and juggles. <laughs> I liked it better when I said it's a travel montage. I mean, that's basically it. I'm just kind of yeah. honing in on it a little tiny bit more. And then uh, they get to the stag and line. You can definitely do this this bit in about... And re- 40 seconds on the show. Yeah, they reach Barillon and then they reach the Stagon line within Barillon. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the whole chapter. But yeah, there's a lot of I want to talk about Just a bunch of clips of them traveling and camping and then, like, maybe Tom singing, like, a super cool song on top of it. And... <laughs> oh, there yeah. you go. We're in oh, Barillon. Yeah. yeah, you're like, you're right. Two minutes of the show. I want to talk about the fact this map of Tarv Allen uh, with the way the fucking uh, roads come through. It looks like it's, like, kind of held down by, like, like forceps and a speculum kind of like open it up because the way the cities come in from the uh, northwest, southeast, north, uh-huh. yeah. It's <laughs> good. Yeah. I don't forceps and a speculum. Yeah, yeah. You kind of like look in. <laughs> you got to really get it. Yeah. You got to fold those island Yeah, uh, yeah. Open that back. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Event. Very aggressive <laughs> map. Tar- a, it is a very aggressive <laughs> map of map of tar- <laughs> tar- tar- right. Seems a little unnecessary. <laughs> um, land scouting ahead. They're, they're, they're basically riding really slow. The whole point of this montage, so to speak, is that they got to regroup the horses. Stand yeah, the horses are the horses are like they're just destroyed from that run. We also learn a lot about how dumb Rand is. Again, we've established. <laughs> They're all pretty dumb right now. There's yeah, seven right, people, right. and Lan- like Rand's first night in camp at that fucking amazing tree fort, his plan is, well, I don't want to be touched by the power, so I'm going to hide in a nook. So, Moraine's going around. <laughs> That's a really good point. So there's only six people. Maybe she won't notice. Yeah, maybe she won't notice, but she came here for three people. At the most. At the least, it's one. And their odds are pretty high, it's you, dude. So, she'll probably forget you. He doesn't... He's in complete denial of that. <laughs> The odds are even for him. Yeah. So I mean, I know they're not for us, the readers and our viewers, but I mean, like, for him, it's it's thirty three point three percent. Maybe as a six foot six guy in a tree fort, no one will see me here in this. Corner. There might be a part of Rand that's like, maybe a queen's the tracker reborn. Yeah. <laughs> the whole way she's riding with land. There's a two percent chance. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, way to go, dude. You're a fucking moron. Hey, on that note, and we've talked about this, like, on Patreon a little bit, like, do you think they're gonna make Aguina a fourth Tiberian? Do you think she's gonna be, like, more in the mix, especially with all the women-centric marketing that they were doing back in the beginning? Like, do you think, think so. this is gonna be, like, she could be the one. It's these three dudes and this chick. We don't know which one it is. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. No, like, do you think, think they'll so. make it a little bit more ambiguous since it's a show and we're not doing Rand point of view chapters throughout the whole show? You know, Tom. That was like that was like a five minute way to ask that question. I'm just no, no, I, no I don't three minutes. <laughs> oh no! And at one the second, answer, no, no. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go with the answer. I hope not. Which is the real answer, is I hope not. I don't know, she could easily be another Tavarian and it, it, was, it wouldn't mess up any of the books at all. And the good news is she dies. But she could also not be and it wouldn't matter. Okay. Like, I, I don't, True. That, that, I think that, the only aspect of them being Tavarian versus her that will matter in any way, shape, or form is that they are specifically needed for specific roles in the last battle. Yeah. But just, I mean, you could say know. that it's she is for no too. Reason. You know what I mean? But I mean, I, I would also have to change a little bit of kind of how like for something a Maryland seat at that young age and like leading all the Aes Sedai to the last battle. That's a huge fucking deal. Well, you could also say that Tavirin really doesn't mean anything besides, hey, good news, plot <laughs> twist happened around you. Well, Which, I think the key to the Tavirin and, and Rand and Matt and Perrin specifically being like, Rand and Matt are integral in him succeeding. Yeah. For yeah. Whatever I mean, reason. if you're gonna go by the logic. For a queen, then you could say the same thing about Elaine and a Dave and Edith. True, like, but she's the only other one that leaves with them. And everybody. No, I agree. Characters. I agree. But she's the only one that leaves with the three. Cores. So does Tom Merlin. He's not Tavira. That's all I'm saying. Maybe Tom Merlin is Tavira. <laughs> okay. She's the only one from the two rivers that leaves with the outsiders to go on the adventure. That's a different book. <laughs> what about that fucking horse? Bella oh, the whores? Yeah, there's a lot of whores. <laughs> so, I don't want to talk about that at all. Yeah, yeah I don't either. Most, anyway, who cares? Not even they, a little bit. They camp, land teaches them a little bit of knowledge about their weapons that they're all holding, and then... Uh, oh, juggling? A little bit of flame in the void, and then Tom tells some stories and juggles. And a queen... The queen, she unbraids her hair. Fucking bitch. And a queen and Rand have a big yell fight. That dark friend fucking Aes Sedai friend of yours. Did I... I hope boy didn't did say, I that say that out loud, that loud just now. Did I say that yeah. <laughs> just, He's just recently had frozen, so his inner monologue's gone. <laughs> Does he say dark friend out loud? Does he say anything about yeah. Aes Sedai? Yeah, yeah. He says, what about the stories where they're dark friends? Yeah, Rand spies on Aguina Moraine. He's just Moraine. freaking out Mallard because she's jungle. like embracing the Aes Sedai part of the story <laughs> and he's like wanting to get as far away from it as humanly possible while still being in her presence. Tom, I've got a great idea. <clears throat> what if because she's putting her hair down, she's no longer braiding it and braiding it is the sign of womanhood and adulthood. Yeah, he sees it as her being a child. And he's now all of a sudden like, oh shit, they're going to they're gonna prosecute me for Statutory underage. rape and braid that's... your hair. That's why he's asking. I'm very concerned about this. Yeah. You were an adult, and now you're a little girl again. That's what it is. I go to a dark place. <laughs> well, that was the aspirin. I mean, you know, it's Rand's thoughts, yeah. not us. <laughs> yeah, see, he's the one saying I'm just kidding. I, I'm just kidding. I was talking about anal sex. Yeah, yeah, I know. And that's you know, going to the dark place. Sphincter, that's uh, the number one Do you think she braids her pubes? Like, is that a... T- is that a, a did they braid their pubes in the two rivers? Yeah, of course. We kind of covered that montage a woman. With, a mon- with a montage. That was good. Good work. Uh, Rand spies on one of their less uh, Gwyn's lessons, and then almost trips over a stick like an idiot. <laughs> By the way, this is completely bullshit. How's the guy tripping over a stick get away from trollocs and a fade in the forest? <laughs> carry, <laughs> well, to be fair, he doesn't make noise. He just almost <laughs> makes noise because he's an idiot. <laughs> but the thing that interests me is she says, like, oh, I can't believe there's two here. And then we see four books later. I can't believe there's like 32 here. <laughs> but they, yeah. they weren't necessarily as naturally strong. But I think at least one or but two. They can, they can learn. Yeah, but, but if I think one or two actually would have had the spark in Born of them, therefore could. Uh, I can't remember if that's 100% true, but the it's just old a, blood It's just a sinks. classic Yoda ripoff. Well, there yeah, is we'll another. Get, I mean, yeah. we'll get to it in like four or five years. I do like how she... <laughs> that shouldn't make me laugh. <laughs> I do like how she mentions how to the men 30. who broke the world weren't evil, they were insane, and... Yeah, like, she... She kind of shows a little bit of compassion and truth. Yeah, and also how she fe- she knows Rand's listening. Yeah. So she says certain words that like 
later on when he thinks back on that conversation he's gonna be like oh she's not one of the ones that's trying to kill me you know what she you know kind of thing like she's very compassionate and very like they weren't evil man they just they they fucked up you know like 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 they couldn't control it blah blah blah, blah. you know what she could have said was oh there's 100 men plus the others who went insane later saved the world doing what they thought was right and delayed the she could ending have for 3,000 years she could plus have the fact that at the time those women did not want to join with him right or wrong and therefore there was a giant cabal that would not let them and therefore they had to fucking do this right Marine sounds exactly like somebody that stays in an abusive relationship <laughs> They were insane. They didn't mean to. He'd had a little bit too much to drink, so Tom hit me a couple times. Yeah, well, no, I'll just fault. go back they to the night. I couldn't help it. Lindsay? It's all your fault. Are you being beaten? <laughs> just um, get a text from Lindsay saying help me. on the phone right now? Should, she oh, can't get the phone right No, I was, text, I was reading my text to her out loud. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, so they reach Marilyn, and that's when we find out that they're known as Alice and Andra here. Yes. There and is. a nice little wall guard gives him some news. News, 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 news. news, news. About some false dragon. Low guy. Yeah, his news is terrible. Like, Land finds out the real news later. Yeah, his news is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's all kinds of shit happening. It's going to be crazy. You mean Andra? <laughs> and Land is like, yeah, it's just the same stuff we we knew before we left. It's yeah. fine. Hon- yeah, honestly, what could have possibly changed in, like, the five days they've been gone? Maybe they spent some time. They also just zigzag when they're traveling normally. So yeah, it took, yeah, it, it took them three weeks to get from uh, Barillon to <laughs> Evansville. <laughs> to Evansville. <laughs> is this the first mention of the children? It Did is. Come up earlier. It, it, no, it's like, like I think it may have come at a passing reference, but this is the first time it really is like no, explicitly was, talked about. I think, it's, and it's really. I'm trying to think of any sort of precedent for it. The idea that it's like a mult. It's. They're from Amador, live in Amador, but they're like multi cult country in that they have troops everywhere. Like, what type of fucking country lets just a giant, powerful army? Well, I think that's the key. It's a lot of the countries are like Andor in the sense that they're so huge, they don't really have like a stranglehold and troops going to every little section of their country. And it's just little towns, and like, you know, what are they gonna do? We made a chapter yeah, house here, we're the yeah, Illuminators. Why- Get out of here, why, you firework-carrying yeah. sons of bitches. What's up? Why would you want to stop them anyway? Do you not walk in the light? Then you can give me a break. Yeah. Oh, they're shit. The good, they're the good guys. Well, they're not going to the borderlands, so that's obvious. Uh, and they can only go to, like, western and or past Whitebridge, where there's, like, fewer things. Like, fewer, like... Cause I think they're pretty pre- prevalent in the areas that they are prevalent later. Like, all around uh, Olive Plain and whatnot, what have you. I don't... I mean, clearly they're not going to Ilian, because Ilian just had a fucking all- war with them. They just like to go places and hang out, man. So how... They, so they're not going to go to Tyr, because They're like Tyr. missionaries. I always see them as, like... It's not like they have forts in other people's countries. I they just don't, see them as, like, missionaries. But they send 2,000 fucking troops to the Olive Plain later. You see them as troops. Well, that was, like, an undercover mission kind of like a war that's different that's not the same as this but they've got hundreds here they're all again in like full fucking like like metal plate and jacket well again by the time whoever the fuck in this case queen morgase hears about it they're they've moved on just saying They've scrawled. They're they're not like not a breaking, threat. They're not breaking any laws, man. Yeah, they just scrawled a fucking uh, you know. Uh, I feel like sending a dragon army. fang on a door yeah. and left. Called somebody a dark I mean, friend. Yeah, leave him alone. John. I feel like they're not burning armed armed troops down. is like you know. Like, hey, I'm just gonna send a few you know fucking marines to hang outside your capital. Nothing wrong here. Well, they're not like Look. hanging people in the streets yet. They're just like yeah, they're calling somebody guy. a dark friend and yelling at them and then and letting on. someone else hang the person. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. My, my yeah they're, they're, ins- they're insinuating a, they're, they're, they're inciting riots they're not doing the riots themselves so here's a question that's going to come up later uh, what is what is Rand's accent like because like everyone's calling him down country and that he's like you know fucking sheep almost and like, like almost like that he's the redneck and then he comes up think, and he says this, he, I think everybody from Emmonsfield probably sounds just like Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs <laughs> Can we get that accent? Can we get that? Uh, I don't get that reference. I don't get that reference. I mean, I don't. I don't. I'm not trying to upset you. I just. Sorry, I can't help you though. I don't get the reference. I'm gonna need an example. I think. Uh, uh, no, I don't know it. I just don't know it. 
Uh, they mentioned the fall of the stone as a marker for the Dragon Reborn. And Rand's like, well, how would that happen? He'd have to be a High Lord of Tear. <laughs> <laughs> Not likely. <laughs> so how does a place fall if well, you have to be uh, inside it before one, it one kid crawls inside and then grabs a crystal sword. So maybe Rand's accent is Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> what is the deal with this dragon? <laughs> Tell me more about this uh, crystal sword. <laughs> Place fall. <laughs> stone of tear. It's not even one stone. I didn't mention this, but I am rewatching Seinfeld. <laughs> Please um, insert the they, they reach the <laughs> stag and lion. That's all I got. Can I ask you? The, question? Only, the only thing for the stag and lion is like much hates them immediately. Is that because? He told them they weren't allowed to come in the door, and then the boss was like, no, they can come in, and he's like, they made me look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why. That's 100% why. Which, there's like and two he, weird things in this show. He's that, that petty, and people, the whole time. people care about their, their limited amount of power that much, and he's in that situation, and he's like, fuck you, this is the back stable, you can't come in here. Like, we're supposed to get this feeling that all of a sudden there's dark friends, like, because they even mentioned, like, there's no dark friends in Terran Ferry, because there ain't shit in Terran Ferry. And yet, like, Alvin, or Avon, yeah, is the guy at the gate, who's yeah, sitting there, yeah. ch- he's got his coin in his hand after being pa- paid for by Andra, <clears throat> and he's sitting there, like, just chuckling and fucking, like, rubbing it down, like, he's going, like, <laughs> look what I've done, I'm gonna make two times my money. And then Butch is over here, like, <laughs> what, the fuck? what does what being greedy have to do with being a dark friend? Well, he's laughing about it. Why would he be laughing about it? Because you're supposed to be... them in? You're uh, supposed to be... Speaking of laughter, I can't wait to get to that part. Yeah, you you can't... (laughs) Okay. Like, does he, like you're supposed to be suspicious of this guy. Like, why is this guy laughing? Maybe he's still laughing about the weird ass. You could call my mule the people of the dragon joke, which I feel like, if anything, that guy's mule should be more important than Bella. That is that is a pretty good joke, actually. Yeah. Not my mule. <laughs> anyway, yeah. but you know what? I mean, many other people's mules, but not mine. This <laughs> is a piece of shit. There's only one mule. <laughs> it can't be people. It'd be person of the dragon. <laughs> Chapter 14, The Stag and Lion. We were already kind of talking about it, so let's keep talking about it. This, of course, was a very important chapter for George R. R. Martin, who wanted to name some of his houses after both stags <laughs> and lions. <laughs> this, is the, this is the inspiration? Yeah. Chapter 14. Super busy in mountain people, they bathe. Private dining room. And then dream, dream time. That's what I wrote. Chapter yeah, 15. Than, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I appreciate the uh, juxtaposition of Grim and Dower Land going, I'm going to go find out what the gossip is to a room of people drinking and being happy. And he is just, like, he looks like fucking death. I mean, <laughs> this could be theoretically episode two. Yeah. Why don't we ever get to see this friendly land? <laughs> what does he look having, like? Because like we see his... jovial conversations with guys in bars. <laughs> I bet you know a lot of people have killed. Damn it, that's not good. Um, let me start again. Let me start again. The most, they're also the most important part of chapter fourteen. We obviously see Rand's the most dick. important part of chapter fourteen is that Rand, Matt, and Perrin and Tom are all naked. Yeah, I we think... see men for the first time. <laughs> Well, let's get there because we gotta get chubbed up oh, first. Oh, oh, yeah. man. We gotta oh, get, right, we man. Gotta get, we gotta get chubbed up. <laughs> All right, men, men's the men's important. Not the naked men. Not the naked men. Men's important. <laughs> so there's twelve tubs arranged in a circle. Do you think Amazon's gonna show dick? I hope so. Because this is like fucking perfect time. I don't understand this bathing opportunity. It sounds like what you do is like there's twelve tubs that you soak in. But you just get a whole shit ton of water and you just like sloice yourself. Like, like, pour you hot water. You basically bathe before you get in the bath. You don't understand a bath? You take a shower before you get in the you, bath. You shower They've been on the road for a week. For a week. I know, but covered just, in dirt and You're grime. just standing there? Yeah, naked. You're just standing there naked. Yeah, just it, washing off the grime, John. I, why not take 12 tubs and, I don't know, do three and three and three and three? I, 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 I just kind of separate it out. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't understand why. Why you're concerned with the logistics of them bathing? Let's move past. This. <laughs> I don't have a lot of time for talking about the fucking bath. Um, but Perrin and Matt. The uh, the ba- the bathing attendant. 
<laughs> makes fun of his accent. His Talks about is- trouble, but doesn't mention what it is, and then lands like, maybe it's the White Cloaks? I don't know. Don't don't worry about it. And also, keep your fucking mouth shut, you country bunkin' idiots. You stupid <laughs> Matt Coffin. Yeah. Let me tell you about It's not so just long. Matt. Like, the second he gets back in there... The first Karen is like <laughs> the, the second he gets back in there he's like you fucking idiots I heard that Matt and then like two seconds later Perrin's like yeah but what about the Trollocs he's like Perrin what the fuck did I just tell you well, no, you gotta work on your like, what is the deal with these Trollocs oh sorry oh that's that's, that's, that's rant though, you know. well I mean they're from the same town no, not land. Wait. Oh, yeah. Matt. 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 Oh. Matt, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. And then parents. Oh, like, my two rivers yeah. accent. Uh, but, gotcha. But Elaine, did you hear about these trolls? But what about those trolls? <laughs> Um, World's worst time felt impressions. Did you hear about it? Yeah, it, I it's, why, it's bad. Why, why don't they just it? make the Dark One's entire prison out of the black box? <laughs> <laughs> it's, too, it's too expensive, Tom. It's titanium. <laughs> um, so I've never understood this. Ryan's still wants. weird about like, Wayne being Aes Sedai. What, sorry, I completely fucked that up. What were you saying? No. I've never understood this nuance here, which isn't nuanced at all. Uh, if Trollocs pursue you, mm-hmm. why do they? Why do the white cloaks think well, we should, this guy's probably a dark friend? Like it's not like you're running from a lover. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think everyone south of the borderlands is pretty ignorant of Trollocs. Like basically 100. Well, percent Even think- the white cloaks are operating off of like stories and idiocy that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. No, I mean, Pedro Nile talks about the fact that he knows Trollocs. Pedro Nile? Which comes from the top, literally. Does he inform his troops? Do you see him as the kind of guy that's like, this is what's going on, everyone? It's not like he's got a shadow spy master or two. Of course he doesn't. He's just like, this is the book that we all read. This is our Bible, so to so to speak. And uh, go go do the Lord's work. Go forth. Yeah, yeah. Like he doesn't give a fuck. He but again, even the anybody. idea of it. Trollocs are trying to kill you, Joe. Well, Joe's obviously a dark friend. Like, <laughs> feel like that's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> feel like, like like if they're trying to kill you, maybe we should try to find out and become friends with you. Well, because uh, you know the dark, the the dark one is clever. You know, and like. For instance, Moraine killed a bunch of ice, or a bunch of Trollocs in the two rivers. Or in well, Field. obviously, she's so just... So clearly, she brought them there to kill them, to trick them into getting on her side. Is it so like... It's all a plan. We're competing all a for a favor for the Dark One? No, uh, maybe. I don't know. I like that idea. Because yeah. I said it. Uh, so, <laughs> like you said, Gwen. Oh, yeah. He's, he's just being... He's just still in his own head, like, all freaking out because she wants to be an ice knight. Uh, he's not... Understanding her embracing the fact that she could be or wants to be an Aes Sedai. Because that's the opposite of what he can imagine. All he wants to do is go back to his farm and live with Tam and just chill out. And <laughs> she's like, oh, the world, it's crazy and huge, and I want to be an Aes Sedai. Oh, I, oh, yay! You know, and he's just going, what the fuck is wrong with you? Could you imagine? The Two a- Rivers is amazing. Why would you ever want to leave? Well, better sex options. Oh, no, you just didn't breed. Or sheep. There's plenty of sex options. It's just your children are fucked over. <laughs> Tom, could you imagine a book where, like, Rand embraced his being the Dragon Reborn, but not like a, like, I want to be celebrity crazy guy, but just kind of like, you know what? Channeling sounds cool, other than insanity. And, like, like was just such a more, like, positive character. I don't think that would go very well. Why? <clears throat> uh, just because. Oh, that's good. I need some more feedback for my book, and that's not very helpful. That's the most feedback you're going to get from me. Um, let me direct. tell you a, a few dumb things we've said on the old podcast because uh, I, I did not. This is going to be bad. Well, well, no, Tom, here's the, here's the thing. You weren't on episode two. Because you had the <laughs> flu, you cunt. <laughs> so you, this was you, episode two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one, we made the exact same mistake we made <laughs> ten years ago. It's not surprising. And we talked about, <laughs> and we talked about, uh, like maybe Luz Theron was being was temporarily healed and not like fully healed because he's healed and he's sane and then he kills himself and then later on he's crazy in Rand's brain and we're like, well maybe those aren't connected or maybe he was temporarily healed and blah blah blah. Ishmael literally says I gave him momentary sanity in this chapter. Yeah, I love. And we'll we get to that. We did the same exact revelation. 10 years ago <laughs> that 
<laughs> that we would theoretically have done now. Because in the in earlier episodes, we were already like, did he heal him temporarily or something? Like, what is the deal with this? But what is the deal? <laughs> What's the deal? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have that's to hilarious. We repeated a joke. I'm sad that word. And by joke, I mean actually read something and then overanalyzed it and then answered our own question like three chapters later. Two separate times, separated by ten years. That's all I'm saying. I'm glad we're consistent. Uh, John always mentioned he wanted to read other stories about all the other false dragons, which I still agree with. Uh, yeah, that's already in my fucking notes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, yes. <laughs> also, I called podcasts pods. <laughs> That's all you, that's entirely all you. way too many times. <laughs> You've been watching a lot of pod hey. racing films. I was like, in the people last did, pod. People did that. Yeah, but I don't like it. Yeah, you oh, like I a, immediately you stopped. Like a, I'm just saying, saying in episode right two specifically, I probably said it like 17 times. And every time I said it, I was like, shut the fuck up, God. me, <laughs> dick. Yeah, I, don't, I, I want you to stop right now. <laughs> Even just describing it. He yeah, I'm already mad added, at myself. He went back and added cast. Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I should do that. <laughs> it would make it better. <laughs> you guys anyway, like back, to chapter, back to chapter. Oh, that's chapter. Not back to chapter. Next chapter. Uh, well, hold on. We still well, got. Some of ex- course, holding on, Tom. Of course. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, so there is an interesting thing. They go into the room for dinner, and again, a queen shows her uh, cunty colors. Yeah. Just, usually, just red or pink, depending. Um, prefer pink. Just so you know. Red. Uh, this is a great monologue that's going on here. <laughs> yeah. just, what's funny is I'm looking at Joe. I was like, laughing and but drinking at the same time, so I was like, "Go on!" Yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then you're just like, "This must." I'll sound, dig my help myself. This into must a sound hole. horrible. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just me talking. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so like, he's like, you know, what? I should apologize. She's having fun. You know, she didn't, you know, know what exactly was happening. She just turns her back, and he's like. Oh, fuck this bitch. <laughs> he does kind of do it. And you know what? I agree, because that's bullshit. He was going to apologize because he's not a stubborn mule of a man, despite what Niniafe tells you. And now he's going to have to dig his heels in because she was a bitch. He doesn't have to. He could apologize again. I mean, that's probably what you should do if you're fucking her, but he's not. No, fair enough. Unless, of course, the dropping of the hair again, and she's in the statutory, and he just really doesn't need to apologize to a child. Fuck it. Uh, let's jump forward to Rand passing out dream chart. No, I want to talk about the fact that we talk about Loghain briefly. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if this is the chapter, because we know that there is, like, Loghain is going to be in season one of yeah. the show. What we know is that, well, not only is it in season one, but... There's Aes Sedai. They're specifically expanding his story. Yeah. I wonder if So there's gonna be more low gain in the in the books. And this is obviously a point where they can do it. This is a great point to do it. You kind yeah. of you can almost kind of get what happened. Like you know, he goes into the fucking common room. I was actually thinking the last chapter when the, the gate guard is like, Oh that guy that guy is in some Either shit, so here's some news, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Like they could cut away to like they a say brief news, low news, gain. news, news, and it goes to yeah, a yeah. different yeah. 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 It seems likely. Uh, I mean, I think I, I think it'd be a great point of view, and I think that'd be a really cool way to like kind of bring in what the fuck the rest of the world's doing. Uh, or they could just because this is all, like the first season is going to be books one and two, he does naturally show up in book two. Well, no, book one still. No, one. he does. Yeah, yeah never but mind. he's just in jail. Yeah, well, or captured. Yeah, same thing. Not quite. He's exciting. in a jail carriage. Jarage. <laughs> yeah, a jarage. It can only be jarage. Um, hold on. Don't hold on me. No. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> so that's really all I've got. Uh, before you, like you said, so two nights here apparently, which is probably a big mistake. Other than big mistake. Yeah, it lets uh, Victor Pulak, Peyton Fane, and Nynaeve all catch up. Yeah, I mean they also they needed the rest, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, that's the reasoning. So the dream. The dream. The dream shard. These dreams. Shards. Um, I think the only thing I think is interesting here is that he wants him to drink something. It is the world's and most a, clever poisoning. And at first I was like, why the fuck? It's a ruby. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, like, at first you're like, what the fuck? And then later on, like, a queen literally uses, like, fork, puts fork fruit yeah. with her mind into people's mouths. 
in later books like, yeah. in the dream world and you're like oh okay well never mind I guess it I guess it makes sense uh, initially you're like drink something in your dream really is that really what what do you think was in that wine <laughs> come <laughs> it's just a big joke <laughs> he's just gonna laugh at him got it's you again not, it's definitely not dream fork root <laughs> it's, it's no I know it's not fork root I'm yeah. just saying in general <laughs> it's almost it's almost as dumb as our fucking first time around <laughs> No, 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 Tom, Tom, I think that it was definitely a dream come, and so it's just Joe's like, I got you again! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come drinking faggot! It's like, Jesus Christ! What? <laughs> you put it in my head! <laughs> I made you drink my cum 1,000 times by turning the wheel. <laughs> That's just what it is. I know, I know but it's like, why is he? It's like, have some wine. And he starts giggling. Uh, uh, <laughs> what are you about to feed him? Uh, enjoy this curdled milk I made last night. <laughs> it's not poison. He doesn't want to kill him. So, like, what could it possibly be? How what can it that be one, come now? now? What time? Only come out. It's just, just, just come. Oh, I, I really do. I, as an actual serious <laughs> thought. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Sorry. We have to imagine. <laughs> the Dragon Reborn drinking uh, Ishmael's cum for the 1,000th time with the turning of the wheel and that that voice just being like, I won again, lose there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I won again, lose there. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, see, you next, see you next millennium. <laughs> that is literally all I came for. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Unintended. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rand says you'll be bound to the end of time. And he goes, the end of time? That would be freedom for me. You crazy? And he's like, I was like, ah, oh, that's actually what he yeah, wants. Literally, what he wants. That's yeah. literally what he wants. Does not want to be spun out. <laughs> yeah. He literally just comes out. He, with, he says the end of time would free me. I I. Well, first off, I've got a couple questions here. Yeah. Some serious, some in. I know that's shocking to hear. One, I appreciate. The, I appreciate the fact that right now, uh, Balzamon does not know which one Rand is, so it's just yeah, a yeah. fucking murky picture. I love that it slowly just gets more and more certain on which one he is, who's the dragon, like, like in the next couple like chapters. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a really cool point. Also, it seems kind of dumb and obvious, but again, that's you know that's his problem. Um. But Fair then enough. secondly, a very important question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, did Janduin and Tigrain do bondage for the creation of Rand? Because it says here, and Balzamon does not lie. Like, he really does not lie very often. He'll say... <coughs> He's the he, father of lies. Yeah, well, ironic. Uh, your father was chosen by the White Tower. A stallion roped and led to his business. Your mother was no more than a broodmare to their plans. I think when you... I think I said the same thing. I think when... Ten years no, ago. No, I, no, we joked about the broodmare thing. I don't... I think you you made a joke about how that was, like, his biggest insult. His, like, your mother was a broodmare. It's not... It's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like... I get... Okay. Your mom had sex with your dad. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh, she did? <laughs> get out of here. Um, but I like the idea that they were just, like, really roped to her. Like, that's just what's going on at the bottom of the White Tower. See, that's much, much more explicit than the first time around. So good job. Thank you. Good job expanding on your idea from ten years ago. I've been... I've been drawing pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was interesting that as, as little... As quick as it is, all the things that he, like fires out rapid fire like oh I did this I did that I did this I did this it's 100% amazing it is but the one the major takeaway is like man did he fuck with Hawkwing's brain <laughs> and it's basically the entire Sean Chan culture is all of because of him yeah. fucking with Sean, with Hawkwing's brain and you're just like Jesus Christ when they come back later and they're like such a force and their culture is so bizarre. Slave owning and fuckheads. They, yeah, and yeah. just like, and like the, like the channelers are enslaved and like all this shit. It all comes from this one chapter where he's like, I did this, I did this, I did this. I laughed when he was dying and I told him this. Like, and I'm just like, Jesus. fucking amazing. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Like, so this, this is, is so weirdly revelatory. Yes. 
so early on. Yeah, I don't even know who the Shan Chan fucking are at this point, but it's like, holy fuck, that is their entire culture is just him fucking with them. As Jono said ten years ago. <clears throat> yeah. Oh wait, that's me. I would love to hear more about. Like, we know Davian. We like, but more about Uriah Stonebow, Amalasa, Am- Rail and Darkspain. All of these people, I want to know more about. Yeah, yeah. But like you those said, those would have been cool. Like those would have been not cool even out- prequels, but just like an outrigger novel. Yeah, like something like a one-off novel where there's like short story collections of like you know, sections of a book that are dedicated to one false dragon after another would have been really cool. Yeah, 100% agree. It would have been just great like, if it was in the wheel... Like almost the like wheel a similarian type thing where it was just like, here's a brief yeah. look into history of this section of time and an interesting fight that or battle or war that was fought like during this period of time. That'd be really cool. But like you said, first off, he explains <clears throat> literally the entire prologue. Thanks for that. You know, yeah, but he does. Yeah, yeah. I did A, B, and C to your mind, and then you kill yourself <laughs> on the fucking mountain, and now here you are. Oh, okay. Well, no need to read further into that. No. And then secondly, uh, I keep coming up every thousand years and fucking with every chapter of important humanity, and like you said, shitting into this man's brain, Arthur Hawkwing, and creating a whole new subculture that'll be easily uh, conquered by my you know, lieutenants. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway... Feel free to read chapter it. fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Strangers and friends. I mean, that's kind of the end. Bran wakes up. Tom snoring. Go on. Yeah. Or Anal said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So we find. I mean, he slept in basically. Yeah. Runs down. Oh, uh, the the cook's trying to quit. There was a rat problem last night. Oh, we forgot to mention the rat problem. Let's go back to chapter twelve, then come back through chapters. Okay. Back to chapter twelve. <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> I do, I do think it's a fucked up imagery in, that is, in his dream, though, from chapter 14 about the breaking back of that rat. I can't wait for that to be in the show and have all those people complain online about like how fucked up that is. <laughs> They're just Yelp reviews. Yeah, yeah. Don't go to the stag and lion. Broken back rats all over the place. Broken back rat is not a very cool book. <laughs> um, he slept in late. He eats. Uh, Tom's entertaining in the other room. What? If you remember, he turns over and looks I'm at his to alarm. I'm to get to an important part. <laughs> he turns over and looks at his alarm and he goes, We slept in! <laughs> and then the music cues. Yeah, and then they run to the airport. That's yeah. not a movie. I think everyone else slept in. Or they leave Rand sleeping. He's the one with the alarm. Is he alone? Yeah, he alone. What's his parent? <laughs> parent's the furnace. We don't know that. <laughs> parent's the furnace. He sleeps all day. Yeah. That's true. I think it was his lack of sleep. Parent couldn't go back to sleep after the drain like a baby, bitch. And tossed and turned all night, and then, you know, Matt just refused to be like, I'm not involved in this shit! Yeah. And he just got up and left. Well, he said he wasn't afraid anymore. I'm not afraid anymore. Yeah. And he left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the furnace, like, yelled at him, and then he left, and then... Yeah. Is Peyton Fane the old man with the snow show? Or is that... <laughs> is that the White Cloaks? Yeah. I don't know. Or men. Since he runs away from men, maybe it should be men. So, uh, that was my favorite part of that entire chapter. Uh, I men? forgot that she tells him visions, and he's like, I don't want to hear this anymore, and he starts to walk away, and then she's just like laughing, and he starts running at full speed, and she's still like laughing maniacally. The like a, like, like a crazy person. Like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> we do realize what she's yelling. She's yelling shoplifter, and what she's running away. What she's laughing at is that she knows... <laughs> You're gonna fuck uh, me soon, man. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna fuck later. You and me are gonna fuck. Get back here. <laughs> Shoplifter. <laughs> it's an interesting chapter. <laughs> I like that I keep coming Tom, out what's this. your overview of this chapter? Yes, Tom. Oh, I don't have a lot. It's the dreams and men. Uh, mainly, it just like her vision's the most interesting part. Just. Uh, it was Jean, isn't Here's interesting. her visions. Fucks with some white clothes. Sees Peyton Payne, fucks with white clothes. And then the Nave is there. That's pretty much it. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Ren and Perrin confer about the dream real quick, and then he leaves, and then he runs into men. Do we want to go into all of her viewing? It's a lot. It is a lot. I mean, like, for the most part, if, if people have read this shit, 
Well, well this is a re reread podcast, are, and if you really want to hear it, you can listen to episode two. Where are we there any of the visions of that don't make sense to you? No, but some of them we got wrong the first time around. Well, yeah, let's give it a call. Let's give and, it a um, oh, Not yeah, wrong per all. se. Not wrong per se, but we didn't have the knowledge of the 14th book. So, like, some of it we were guessing at still. The only one I don't remember is Rand with a beggar staff. It's not really there. It's not, like, a big thing. It's it's when he's blind. Uh, no. I mean, it's like, later on. It's the last, last part. Oh, well, he's hiding who he is, and he's like wandering around Arid Domain. I think other than, other than that, all the visions are pretty straightforward. Did I say blind? What was I? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, they're pretty. Know, lands are all straightforward. What What's that, Tom? We know what they all mean. Otherwise, yeah, I'll, I think the the takeaway from our old episode versus now is that. The bloody hand was, technically doesn't occur. So you were so convinced that Rand loses a hand, and I was like, well, that, at this point in time, doesn't, to me, a bloody hand doesn't mean he loses a hand, it's just a bloody hand, like, it doesn't I mean, think that's just the brands. It could be, but it uh, could also be that he loses a hand later. I mean, Matt's eye on a balance scale is quite literal, which we, again, joked about last time. There was no I was balance like, scale. I was laughing about, like, how I just saw that as, like, a, like a vision, not yeah. necessarily a literal vision, but just like a vision of like, oh, he, it's an eye versus an eye, and he has to balance something versus another thing. It's literally half the light of the world. He literally gets his eye ripped up. Yeah. So her visions are way more literal, I think, yeah. in a in a re 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 read <laughs> than it ever was like initially. You know, like especially with the fourteenth book, the knowledge of the last book now under her belts. It's like this is a very it's so specific and just straightforward. Whereas before, I was, like, trying to interpret it and, like, maybe this means this, maybe this means that, you know, kind of thing. Like, I think they're all pretty straightforward, like, as Tom was just saying, kind of thing. Yeah. And then after the vision, she laughs like a comic book villain, and he runs into the streets. What I think is so funny about him, her laughing like a comic book villain is that it's literally about them being together. Because he's mentioning how... <laughs> How Egwene and him love each other, but they don't love, they're not going to end up like that, and they don't love each other in the way that they think they love each other. And then she mentions three women around his funeral pyre, and not one of them's Egwene. And then, and she's like, and he's like, I don't accept this. And she's like, well, I don't either, but that's where we're at. And what she's talking about is them being together, and he's talking about something else. It's very hilarious, like how much she's just referencing them having sex. You won't escape from me. (laughs) Well, because she's like, I'm going to fall in love with this guy. She no thinks the, idea, way. the idea that she's gonna fuck that guy is ridiculous. Well, also just the in her mind, yes, and also it's so funny because she's just like, "I'll see you later," because she's like, "No, I mean literally, <laughs> like I know I will see you later," because he doesn't tell him that she's one of the women. So like from Why not? I don't know why doesn't she? <laughs> hey, in a couple of years we're gonna have sex a lot. And it's then... pretty funny. I like this piece too about like. Uh, so he's like, did you see anything about 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 rats or dreams? Like, no, not about rats. I think the only one that but, I uh, is what about you dreaming about me? The only viewing that I think stands out to me is Matt's re- laughing face one. Doesn't really have like a solid answer. He laughs about everything. Well, is it him yeah. though, or is it? Yeah, like, he just he just laughs a lot. Dude. Does it represent the 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 golem or whatever later? The golem? On? No, shouldn't. Why that guy laughs constantly when he's about to kill? He's like a smiling, creepy vampire guy. (laughs) You sound like Sherlock. Golom. Whatever. (laughs) You know, I don't know. Goes to the city, runs into fame first. Peyton fame? Yeah, what do you think uh, about him running into Peyton fame? I think that's to be honest at its best. I mean, we know now. Is it, or is it Lojack, Peyton Fane, homing in on a ramp? <laughs> Lojack's probably a thing anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it, it, it's a reference that if you're old as fuck, you'll, you'll understand. <laughs> I think... Is it him having a GPS positioning system? <laughs> you mean trying to have a GPS position? He, he runs into Fane and then runs into Matt in the middle of a city? Yeah, I, what are I, the odds? I guess the odds are... It depends how much he's been running. I like when him and Matt are fucking with the white cloaks and it's really all Matt, but Matt's like, watch this shit. And he runs upstairs and shoots a thing with a slingshot and then, like, the mud splashes out of the white cloaks and Rand's like, ha ha, got him! 
And then <laughs> the white coats are like, hey, dickhead, you laughing at us? And he's like, uh, no, bro. Yeah. And, you know, kind of thing. And, like, the whole point is, like, Rand has this confrontation with him. He starts probably pulling in the one power. Well, no, no, it's because he'd already done that a week ago. It's the euphoria from when he yeah, healed the no. from Bella. It's, yeah, from when he healed the horse. Yeah. Of course, of course. No, his cold symptoms are from That's the what horse. it's all from. That there, It's literally yep. described to Egwene. What happens is like a week later, and then five days later, three days later, two days later, that after you've We've channeled... we talked about this before. Yeah. It, after you've channeled, you'll get like euphoria <laughs> mixed with flu symptoms. And oh, okay. Anyway... The point is that he There's starts. Too, too he flips over his scenes. cloak and he he brandishes his sword a little bit and he's just like, check this shit out. What about this? And then like Matt comes out two seconds later. And he's like, you're crazy, man. You're about to fight those white cloaks. And then I'm just like, you're the one who started. <laughs> who started this whole thing? <laughs> but the best part is like Rand has no idea really what the heron mark is. Yeah. So he like sweeps back his fucking dick and there's like a heron mark like like a. A, a Wait, thing on the sword. Like his dick? Yeah, he didn't notice that. Read better, man. And like the guys are like, is this guy really so dangerous? Like, well, it looks like it, but he is also like eighteen or twenty. But this is kind of like, yeah. He just sits there like swordmaster. What now? Like, what's your plans? Well, there's three of us, and fuck you. The two major scenes in this chapter hinge on uh, somebody like laughing like a crazy person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And someone being crazy, <laughs> laughing a lot, and then all of a sudden getting a hangover. So and that's how you—that's how you know random men were meant for each other. <laughs> they <laughs> both laugh like crazy people. <laughs> so getting back to men's viewings, and specifically later on when he gets back with like Matt and Perrin, comes out of the end, and he tells them the Neve's there, and they're talking to Tom, and they're talking about everything. Men stops him and is like, "Hey, I gotta talk to you," and he's like, "I don't have time right now." And she's like, "No, I gotta talk to you, you dummy." And she basically says, like, when I saw Neneve and Moraine, like, the sparks, like, that darkness with the sparks filling it image was, like, crazy strong. And he's like, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. You saw that before. And, she, and she's like, no, no. Now there's real sparks. Obviously, yeah, before, I needed, like, three or four of you in a room. Clearly but less just sparks. them, it was go- it was doing it. And, I, and way back in Twatcast episode two, I said, maybe Neneve and Moraine are the ones that use Calendor with Rand at the end of the book. Did you? <laughs> yeah. You were wrong. Nailed it. Moraine doesn't use Calendor. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, she does. Moraine and weird, Neneve oh, help yeah. with Calendor yeah. in the fucking bit of Shayogul. And I was that's like, maybe they're guess. the two that he takes with him into Shayogul with the Calendor. And they're like, you're like, my God. That's dumb, that, dude. Exactly. Just saying. Pretty, Just. pretty good. I think you good. It. I also called everything pods back then. <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> no longer confident. Hey, how do you guys like this pod so far? It's a good pod. <laughs> what do you think about the last pod we were on? God, dear, ugh, it makes me want to vomit in my own mouth. Just think. Yeah, I feel that. bad that I said it as a joke a second ago. Yeah, don't. Let's never talk. Let's never talk about it again. Let's never talk about I it. wonder if I, I wonder if I was secretly watching you while you were doing it, just being like, "What a fucking idiot!" I'm pretty sure when you were quote unquote sick in episode two, you walked by us about 17 times to go outside to smoke a cigarette. Which so is- probably you were just like looking in through the window. Never, yeah. <laughs> judging, sick. just judging us. He was smoking a tobacco pod. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, thank God I wasn't on this joke. Keep saying pause. I'm sick and I have a flu and I have a cold, but I'm going to go outside in the cold and smoke a cigarette while I st- <laughs> stare into John and Joe and judge them. I remember that we had recorded in the fucking living room, too. Yeah. Just out in the middle. <laughs> it, was, it was downstairs. It was, it was out of the way. It was all, what, Barton's vodka at the time? <laughs> no, no, Mr. Boston. Yeah, Mr. Boston. Before we Pop-Pop. moved to uh, Pop-Pop. Pop-Pop was... Popov was a, a step up. Popov was... <laughs> God, we were so poor 10 years ago. Oh, wow, we really were. Look, if it was a plastic bottle and it said vodka on it, I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> and if it was thirteen ninety nine versus nineteen ninety nine, I bought three of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you guys have any show thoughts? Anything strike you from these chapters based on the show, upcoming show thoughts? Well, there's that amazing scene that apparently uh, may or may not be real that's been leaked of the picture of them in, uh, I guess that's in, in Shatter Logoth. In where? I think it's Shatter Logoth, too. We, talk, we talked so, about that two weeks ago. Yeah, but everyone's very, very... No, we talked about Rand on the Mountaintop, and that was a Patreon episode. We didn't. Did we talk about the Rand, Matt? I feel like we did. Maybe not. I drink a lot, I'll be honest. (laughs) 
I don't think we talked about that on a podcast. Maybe we did. Yeah. Well, if we did, listeners, and I mean viewers. <laughs> and I mean diddlers. No, no. Uh, you're welcome for our second part. There's some, been some leaked imagery. I don't know how... M- that's not really pertaining to this chapter, per se. No, I don't know why I can in my head. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess... Everyone is very convinced that it's not Shatter Logoth for some reason, and I'm like, it looks pretty run down and destroyed. Well, it looks more. I hope it's not anything. Why does Matt have a beard? Don't like it. I don't know. They're traveling. No. I've actually kind of been. I mean, not concerned about because I ultimately don't care that much. I wouldn't but, give a shit if Perrin having a beard wasn't just like a weird story point. Well, it just means that Perrin needs to have more of a beard later. <laughs> His original he needs, to look, yeah. he needs to look more like Wolverine. I need more of a Wolfman vibe from Perrin later. I asked and for Matt Donner. needs to maybe get more clean shaven as he becomes quote unquote a nobleman. So Terran beard, just a clean, just kind of waxed clean. corners at, or at points. Uh, people have been talking about Matt's beard a lot from that picture, and they're just like, "What the fuck? Why does Matt have a beard?" And I'm just like, "Well, I mean, they've been on the road, and that's what everyone says." But if you look at Rand right behind, him, doesn't have a beard. Well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you know why that is. <laughs> It doesn't matter if they've been on the road or not. He's got a hair mark sword. Yeah, he's got always a sword. Sharp. He can shave with a sword. Yeah. <laughs> Just, a, by the way, it's a silly thing to talk about. Like, there's no context to that picture. There's at zero. All. Yeah. Well, the only context is the background, and the only background I would say that's prevalent, although it looking kind of shitty, which could mean anything. It doesn't look good. It enough does for also look sort of broken up. and like. It looks broken, but it looks to also the left like... of the picture, and I'm like, well, I guess that could be ruins. But if a Shatter Logoth is, you know, let's call it a thousand years old, it is. How many wooden huts two. are going to be around? It should be two thousand years old. Yeah. So if it's two thousand years old, yeah. maybe how many wooden it, structures are going to be hanging out in Shatter Logoth? Well, maybe it's a tree fort. No. <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> no one notices that just right outside of fucking. Just t- based Karen on the Perry. scene and like, there's someone's foot in the shot and you don't know who it is. I'm like, what's well, probably Parent. Wrong. I mean, it could be anybody, but it could it's probably Perrin. Master it, Hightower. It's Shatter Logoth. It's, the, it's Matt and Perrin. It's Karen Master Man. Hightower's foot as he's running. <laughs> <laughs> he's running away. What if, what if we were running from the cops in a car, and we parked the car right next to a dumpster and then hid in that dumpster? So, yeah. more Tree pertaining forward. to these chapters in the show... Oh, my bad. I want to see the men casting, God damn it! I'm so excited. I did, show me men! <laughs> yeah. It's all I don't like care if you don't show me Elaine for a little while or Avienda, obviously, or maybe some of the people that come later, but, like, I should know what Min looks like by now. I think that's almost one of the biggest red flags that shows how far they're not ready for this. Like, not, like she only has, like, one or two scenes so far, yeah. but also she's in uh, she's in book two as well. Well, I'm sure it's going to be, like, a situation where with Tom Marilyn kind of thing where Ray Fiatchkins was like, we're, we're just waiting for the perfect Tom, and here he is. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. Yeah, like, I, hey, I already know who Lee Andrew is. Yeah, and she fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. Like the character. I can't vouch for the so, actress. Let's do, let's get mad. Yeah, agree. You know what we should do? And Dane Bonehold, for that matter. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's another piece that clearly shows that they're not done with this shit. There's no bone holes. No, no, no. Jeffrey? They're done with it. They just haven't told us shit. How does that work? I mean, like, I get well, how that's it very works. easy. That's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I get how it works, but it just seems like, why not? I mean, Pat and Fane was in the table read, and we didn't know until, like, months later. That this is Pat and Fane, and we're like, we saw that guy, saw that guy. That I like the idea of, like, how they've been dripping yeah. pieces out, but yeah. now it seems like it's, well, it's, it's been Just tell me who the long. fuck man is. Yeah. yeah. It's been. One week. Well, if the show's coming out in the summer, it's which not. it's looking it's, more and more and not. more like it's not. Yeah, this is a like, like November, December release at best. Yeah, I would agree with that. And and I don't think it's going to be summer of 2021, which is what everyone thinks, but I don't think that's the case. I think it'll be like that's late so this far year. Away. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it will be. I think it'll be like late this year, maybe fall, yeah, it, it's if like, we're lucky, and then... It's like November to March. It, Worst case scenario, I'd imagine like a January, like February 2021 release, like really oh, early in the year. dead by then. <laughs> you That's will a good be. point. You will be. Just, yeah. just release the show. And you will be talking about how you can't wait to move down to Georgia again by then. So my only note <laughs> from like thinking about the show versus these chapters was like, 
It'll be really interesting to see Barillon because they call it a quote unquote real city. And I know they're country bumpkin idiots, but like, and Tom almost like laughs at them because they think it's a city. But like, that'll kind of help us see the scale of the show. When they get to Barillon, it'll kind of like, yeah, it'll establish kind of a scale. Like, this is just a tenth of visually. Yeah, 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 exactly. Now, yeah. now I want to see who they cast for Barillon. Yeah, that's a good, that's where I thought you were going at first. <laughs> oh, no, 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 like, no. Just they the call city. her a city. And I'm like, whoa. They call her a city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kids are so big, they're a city. Yeah, look at those lights. They are my, my that's the no, that's it, just right there. <laughs> they call her the a whole, city. Oh, country, oh, country just lives on it. And then I was like, what about Endless Furnace Face for Mishmael in the dream? How do you think they're gonna do that in this show? It actually is going to be the furnace from do you uh, think they're gonna on. like. Zoom in on his eyes or his mouth and just show like an endless fire and people screaming it, inside. Or <laughs> it, it is going to be the furnace from Home Alone. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Hello, Red Out. Hello, Gamma. That first book, he's afraid, and then afterwards, like I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> Shut up. Exits, those are my only exits, notes for the every time for he wakes show up talk. One of those dreams, he's just screaming and running up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> he just runs up some basement stairs. He's always hiding. To go to the bed whenever like the scene starts the next morning. What we don't know is that the Wheel of Time show bought the McAllister house. <laughs> we were filming in Chicago. <laughs> They're just the dream sequences. That makes sense because <laughs> everything else is shot in Prague and abroad and in LA. But the dream sequences you shot in Chicago. All in the McAllister house. And that makes okay. sense because Prague <laughs> Uh, Chicago has a lot of Eastern European, Central European uh, kind of people descent, so it makes sense to go from that area oh, yeah, to Chicago. Totally, yeah, it makes complete sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just like that our weird Home Alone uh, obsession is now bleeding into the very, very first quote unquote episodes of the Wheel of Time that we're covering. So that's Twatcast this week. If you have any comments or questions, the best way to find us is on Twitter at Twatcast. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen wherever you get your podcasts and you can email us at twicast at gmail.com we're on patreon now that's patreon.com slash twatcast if you enjoy the show which you fucking do help us out and give us a dollar or 40 and of course thank you to all of our current patrons uh, you guys are great people we appreciate you and you smell delicious yeah, we got a new one today. I like you. Uh, speaking of new one today, we got a new patron today. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Who actually was trying to say that for John? His name's Andrew. And on that note, I've been specifically not saying people's last names, but I've noticed on a lot of things I watch on YouTube or something, like people, they'll just like blast people's full names out. Well, his name is. I'll, I'll blast the full name out. It's Andrew. <laughs> There's probably oh, is there a thousands, relation? Thousands of them. Yeah, <laughs> are, it seems exactly like Robert, Jordan. Robert Jordan. Yeah. At any rate, I've, I've been specifically not Jordan saying people's really. last names. I don't know if people care about that. Patrons, let us know. Okay. Do you give a shit? I don't know. I don't know if you care. You can pay us a dollar and let us know if you care. Well, welcome to the show, Andrew, on Patreon. <laughs> yes. on, on. In order to get your, in order to not have your last name read out, you have to increase your donation by one thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and if you wanted it read out. $2,000. Specifically, Andrew, <laughs> give us a topic to discuss sometime, and um, various twatcast junk is headed your way, I guess. Twat, literally twatcast junk. It is a, yeah. <laughs> I we mean, uh, random, wet random, pavement. random things <laughs> yeah. that say the word twatcast on it. Dunk our balls into it as a mold. Are currently in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, the twatcast theme song is brought to you by Taffy Bennington at Sing with Taffy. That's two F's and one at sign. On Twitter and Anarchy101 on YouTube, which is a new website wherein people show pictures of tubes. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Join us next yeah. week for the Wheel of Time, book one, The Eye of the World. We'll be covering part five, which is chapters. 16 through 19. Those are four chapters in which a whole bunch of hilarity ensues and Scooby and the gang eventually figures out who it is really is Randall Thor. No, it's the It was the guy that owned the amusement park the whole time. <laughs> and he would have gotten away with it too <laughs> for all of these meddling Emmons fielders. And that d- fucking whore's Bella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John. You listen to Joe. Uh, Keith Chan, you filthy animals. Tom! Stay your mouth. Goodbye.
<laughs> I love how you right, always say like that's a question. <laughs> 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 we never <laughs> 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 <